Einstein saw space and time as a flexible material that could be distorted by gravity. A black hole is merely a very deep well in this material. When two black holes come close to one another, these two orbiting wells stir up space-time and send out ripples that can travel clear across the universe. And these waves will move out through the universe, traveling at the speed of light. So we can hope to not see black holes with light, but maybe in some sense hear them it's if we can pick right the now. of the fabric of space-time itself. I'll have to have you look at it. For the past several years, Jana and her colleagues have been trying to predict the sounds black holes make as they spin around one another. The calculations are not for the faint of heart. Modeling what happens when two giant objects create a storm in the sea of space-time takes some serious math and months of supercomputing. This is the orbit of a small black hole around a bigger black hole, and it's literally making a knocking sound <laughs> on the drum, where the drum is space-time itself. Well, it really sounds like sounds like a, a knocking. It starts to get uh, a higher frequency and happen faster until it falls into the big black hole and goes down the throat. And then the two will ring out together and form one black hole at the end of the day. And it, it just sort of, you know, chirps up. Because black holes stir up the space and time around them so much, the orbit of one black hole around another looks nothing like the orbit of Earth around the Sun. An orbit can come in around a black hole and do an entire circle as it loops around before it moves out again. So instead of getting a, an oval, you get a three-leaf clover that processes around. This clover leaf pattern keeps coming out of the simulations. Jana was shocked because this picture of how two of the heaviest objects in the universe move around one another bears an uncanny resemblance to the way two of the lightest objects move around one another, the tiny protons and electrons inside an atom. We can build a classical atom out of a big black hole, like the nucleus, and a light black hole, which acts like an electron. And together they form a real atom in a sense. How could an object that weighs so much behave like a subatomic particle that weighs so little? When we talk about ordinary objects or people even, they are never exactly the same. I mean, you could try to clone me and still the different copies of me would not be exactly the same. And in that sense, people and ordinary objects are not like fundamental particles. They're distinguishable. But the black hole is quite different from that. Black holes are like fundamental particles, and that's very surprising because they're huge macroscopic objects. Right now, this idea is only a tantalizing hunch. But in just five years, supersensitive detectors should be able to pick up the ripples in space created by two massive black holes spinning around one another.